Hey guys! Today we're going to talk about um, a country that I have been to that I did not live in but that I have been to and that I would move to if given the chance. We're going to talk about the Czech Republic. Now the Czech Republic is um, always showing up on all of these lists of great places that expats say are great to live in and work in and so on. And now I did not get to live there, obviously, as I just said, but I did get to visit there for, I believe the trip was nine days. It was fantastic. It was literally a, uh, let's get some tickets and show up in the country and see what's there and try and find a hotel sort of a deal. Um, I don't think we had, I don't think there was a hotel involved until I got there. But um, so anyway, it's a great country for doing that, to be honest. Like I said, I would move there if I could, and there are several reasons why. And that also, I just want to point out, um, I don't say that about a lot of countries. There are, are countries that I visited that I love and would love to visit again, but I would never move there. Hi, Italy. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, so, wonderful things that I love about Prague and the Czech Republic. Prague is, um, I believe it. I'm showing my ignorance here. I believe it's the capital, but I might be wrong. Um, but in any case, it's definitely an interesting city and it's definitely um, where most people go when they're, you know, traveling to Prague. Excuse me, traveling to the Czech Republic. So, like I said, it is one of my favorite countries in the world. There's just so much stuff into even just one city that Prague alone is one of my favorite cities in the world. But if you are there on a trip and you want to step outside, there's so many other things that you can see. The, the countryside is glorious and um, there were there there are lots of other things to see. One of the most um, well known is, I don't remember the name of it, but there's a church made completely of bones from victims of the plague. And um, it sounds morbid, but there was actually a good reasoning behind it. They were trying to honor the people who had died from the plague by um, turning their bones into consecrated ground. Um, I believe that's what the story was. I did visit there in, I believe, 2011, so it has been 10 years. I might be a bit fuzzy or outdated on some things, but I believe that that was why that was a thing. But in any case, you're going to find stuff like that. You're going to find interesting things all over the country. Um, I was mostly in Prague, so that's basically where my information is coming from. So, I've got my notebook here, and we will talk about Prague and the Czech Republic. Now, if you haven't heard Czech, the language, please pause this video, do a Google, and listen. It is such an interesting language. It's a Slavic language. Um, it's supposed to be pretty hard to learn. I would do my absolute best to learn it. In fact, I've considered learning it even though there's no reason for me as someone who is not in the Czech Republic or Czechia, whichever you prefer, whichever they prefer. <clears throat> That's a bit contested. Hi, Walter. Um, whatever. There's no reason for me to learn the language, but I would, you know. The sounds used in this language are really interesting and I I really suggest listening to it. If you're going to um, visit someplace or move someplace, you should at least enjoy like what the locals sound like and what you hopefully will eventually sound like. So that is um, one of my first points on here. The language itself is amazing. Um, now regarding Prague specifically, um, I think I wrote it down best. I'm not going to try and ad lib this. So what I wrote was the mix of time periods present in Prague is a fairy tale for anyone interested in history, archaeology, or even architecture. You're going to be seeing architecture, I believe, from eight or nine hundred um, AD to um, or Common Era, if that's what you prefer. Uh, I mean, up until present day, but there's um, a lot of there's a lot of Baroque architecture, and there's a lot of everything in between. You're going to see all sorts of um, architecture that was common in Europe from, like I said, eight or 900 all the way through, but especially during like the Baroque period. And um, just, there's just some really incredible stuff. You're going to see the astronomy tower, the clock tower, um, which I can't even describe, but if you're into um, timepieces or astronomy or astrology more like, then you will definitely enjoy that piece. 
There's just so much there, I can't even begin to describe it. Like, you can walk straight through castles. I mean, you can see the weapons, you can see the armor, you can see the crowns, you can see the thrones. It's really like, for me especially, it's breathtaking. I, w I don't think I'd ever get tired of going there. Walking around the city, is everywhere you turn, there's something else that's amazing. So, um, oh yes, and definitely um, one of those things is the university. It's the Charles University, I believe. I wrote it down. I did not want to get this wrong. Um, I believe it was the Charles University. I did not write it down. It has been in use since 1348 and is in the top 200 universities in the world. I did look at this university when I was considering um, where I might want to go back to school in the future. <laughs> Clearly, you know, that was during the daydream stage, but it is, again, one of the top 200 universities in the world. It would have been negligent to not look at it. Plus, it's just in a fantastic place. And I know um, at least one person who has gone to school there and it's supposed to be really good. Um, it is this I cannot not mention. The library is gorgeous. It looks like the library in Harry Potter, only better. They have manuscripts dating back to um, the first century AD. They are Greek pap papyri? Papyri? I can't believe I don't know how to pronounce that. It's Greek papyrus and there's writing on it. And it's multiples. They are multiples. Maybe I'm not as good at English as I thought. Anyway, moving on into this century, um, I can't stress this enough. This is one of those countries where once you get there, the prices are great. Obviously, there will have been inflation over the past decade. That's normal, but people go there to go shopping. Like people from, uh, rich people from the US, um, other people from other parts of the world will go there to go shopping. I went there partially to go shopping, I will not lie. You can find all sorts of amazing deals on pretty much any brand, especially if you like European brands. You're going to find it for less money there. And when things are on sale, it's like pennies on the dollar, what you'd be paying for incredible stuff. I went there when I was um, going through an intimacy me phase. And intimacy me has all sorts of things. Um, they have swimwear. They have pajamas, they have loungewear, they have lingerie, they've got all sorts of stuff in that in that vein. And I could not believe what I was paying for silk items. It was like a few dollars. So if you like shopping, if you're thinking about going someplace traveling, I definitely recommend checking out Prague. Aside from all of, you know, the cultural, you know, and historical and archaeological um, attractions, you can go shopping there and save a lot of money. Like if that's your thing, then you still want to check it out. Um, let's see. The food is really good. Now, obviously, if you don't like European food, maybe you won't think that. But I really remember the food being, it's a little on the heavier side. It's European, but like it's comforting. My favorite things that I remember from eating there, and it was a long time ago, but I remember the goulash. I had it right when I landed. It's not like your ground beef canned tomato goulash um, that you see here in the US. That's not actually goulash. Like the actual Eastern European goulash is remarkably different than that. I believe the one that I had did have a tomato base. It was completely different. They had what they call pancakes in it, but they're not even like pancakes like what you're used to. It was a savory dish, obviously. But I maybe I'll look for a recipe and link it just because there's no way for me to really describe this. I'm, I'm coming up short on ways to describe this. Other than it's nothing like the goulash that you see here in the US. It's not actually goulash. The other thing that I remember was um, one night I went to this really fancy restaurant and I had been living in the Middle East for a while. Now I grew up here in Michigan um, with a bunch of deer hunters. I'm used to venison in my diet. Obviously, that's not something you're going to be getting in the Middle East. When I went to this fancy restaurant in Prague and I saw that they had venison, venison steak as like a specialty, a springtime specialty on the menu, you know I bought it. It was amazing. Like, I've had a lot of deer meat in my life. Call me what you will. That's fine. <laughs> Maybe I earned it. But um, this is probably the best deer steak I've ever had in my life. And it was in Prague. Overall, um, I can't emphasize this enough. 
I love this country. I would love to move there. Obviously, there are things that have to be taken into consideration, such as real life, but I would love if given the opportunity to um, move there sometime. Um, overall, the culture, the ambiance, everything about it, it was a very welcoming country. There were, it, it was, it felt like home to me. Even though the language was remarkably different than anything I've experienced, even though um, I didn't know at that point, actually, my family, we did not realize that we were actually Eastern European. We were told we were German. Um, even though none of that was, we didn't know that. Um, it just, something about it really felt like home to me. Um, a lot of expats apparently say that it's hard to make it feel like home. I don't know if that difference is because of the language and um, Slavic is a very Slavic is a very difficult family of languages to learn. Apparently, I have not yet tried, <laughs> or if that was um, because maybe it was different from the like the foods that they were eating growing up, or or maybe that's just the difference of um, moving there versus visiting. It's remarkably different. You can't visit a you can't honestly visit a country, um, and for like just a week and then decide to move there. Um, if I were, for example, if I did actually decide to move there, we would have to like actually go and spend a few months there to see if it was a good fit, which I recommend doing if you're thinking of moving literally anywhere, spend a few months in that country and a few, few different um, seasons to see. But in any case, that was what I liked about the Czech Republic or Czechia and Prague. Um, if you're Czech or if you know, let me know. Um, I thought that the country had changed its name from Czech Republic to Czechia, um, but at the same time I have heard that that's um, that there's contention and I don't want to use the wrong term. So if you do happen to know that, please let me know in the comments. If you've been here, let me know what you thought of it and if you loved it because like I know I did and everyone says they love it when they visit. So I'd love to hear about your experiences with that too. In any case, um, give me a like if you like this video, if you want to see more like this, and um, please feel free to subscribe because I am making all these voice, oh, excuse me, all these videos, and I would like to not be speaking into a void. In any case, I hope you have a wonderful week. I will talk to you later. Bye.